hate the sin, love the sinner. Do you know how impossible it is to continue such duplicity, to be so, to give kids mixed messages and to expect for them to understand how to hate someone and love someone at the same time? That's, if that's not bad enough, uh, think about the real life conditions that we live in that you have actual people, and they have to be labeled as Christians, and I say that as much as we like to blanket uh, the Islamic world with Muslims this and Muslims that, I think that we in the so-called Christian world also need to see ourselves and the hate that we uh, perpetuate. So when we say things like hate the sin, love the sinner, and the reality is that there are many people who are so-called hated for their sins, um, bullied, haunted to death by young people, old people alike, or even worse, you have young people whose bodies are sexualized by old people by telling them that you're a fag or you're a sissy as a child, telling that person that, that your young body has some uh, sexual identity attached to it is a kind of emotional sexual abuse. That's one thing. But on a very base level, you have Christians talking about hate, actually advocating hate. When you have Christians who say, hate the sinner, or hate the sin, love the sinner, they're actually advocating a form of hate. Now, when I think about Christian activism, um, I think about people like Martin Luther King, who, and I think about, uh, okay, even this month you have the anniversary of the Freedom Riders. And they were saying things like, we are doing this out of love. And we don't even want to be... Um, doing the sit-ins, the, you know, all the bus riding, all those things that put themselves in harm's way, but they're not even going to do that out of hate for the so-called racial terrorist in the South. Even that, I recently heard interviews with a lot of them and then those people, those young people today who were retracing their steps, and they're saying that was the greatest lesson that they learned was that even in those moments of facing, you know, state-sanctioned violence where you had the actual governors of southern states um, perpetuating, advocating what we have to call hate, and they were all Christian. Um, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, just read Martin Luther King's Why We Can't Wait. It's a really quick, easy read. That, and the, of course, a letter from the Birmingham uh, jail, much of which was directed towards his uh, white counterparts, as in white clergy, so fellow Christians, to say that it's impossible to advocate hate and Christian love at the same time. Just go back to it. So these aren't my words. This isn't me just making this up. This is Dr. Martin Luther King saying this, and this is how I've understood this. So you can talk all about how you interpret the Bible in a way that says that you have to hate the sin and love the sinner, but there is no way to be a true authentic Christian and advocate hate. Because even those people, like I started to say, with the Freedom Riders and those people who want and fought hard for civil rights, they did it out of love. And they were only so successful because they did it out of love. Because they were not saying, well, you hate us, we're going to hate you back. They did quite the opposite. So I dare you to love us to death, as they say.